for the next part of the evening. We we'll close early to this evening. We we'll close early. We we'll start early tomorrow. So for the next, uh, this is the last session for today, and um, the next part of the service is. It is the anointing that breaks the yoke. That's the next short, short part of this meeting. It is, it is the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's mysterious. It's mysterious. <laughs> You know the yoke, John. Can you get me a picture of a yoke? I'm sure you can find one. If we has found one for me before. You see, a yoke is like. Do, do you mind becoming an animal for two seconds? God bless you. Thank you. You see, I need another another animal. Oh no no stop stop stop. Be serious be serious. Oh oh please. It's not the right thing. Okay 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 okay. These two. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you. God bless you. Uh-huh. Yes, a wooden. A wooden structure. A yoke is wooden, fixed on the two of them. They can't go left, they can't go right. And they can't even go forward unless they are released. It's called a yoke. It's mysterious. It's a big wooden, and the Bible even speaks of the yoke of iron. That one is made of metal. If you ask me, thank you, Holy Spirit. If you ask, thank you, Holy Spirit. If you ask me what breaks a yoke, I'll say an axe. If you ask me personally, personally, I'll say that we should get a, me- or a metal cutter or a saw. If you tell me that you drop some drops of oil, I don't think you, you, you may even help the yoke. <laughs> it's, a mysterious, it's a mysterious scripture. It is the anointing. There we go. There we go. Pastor Iceberg, I need your help. Be, be the yoke for today. Be the yoke. Hold, hold the shirts. Don't be afraid. Hold the neck. Hold the This one too. Okay, walk into church growth. Walk into church growth. Walk into your healing ministry. You are called. God, God is calling you. Can't you sense him? He's calling you. God. Cross, cross from 100 to 150. Cross from 100 to 150. But the anointing, go, go, break it, break the yoke, break the yoke, break the yoke, lift, lift it, break the yoke. The anointing breaks 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 the yoke. Yes. So, so. So if you stay with me for a few seconds, I'm going to look at the yoke. Today, today I just want you to think about the yoke. What yoke is on your neck? I would have said an axe. Let's, let's get to it. And many of us are hacking at the yoke. Hacking. Using our force. You know, you don't even understand. So I, I'll read it to you. I'll read it to you. I'll read it to you. Just listen. It's a short session. Just stay with me, listen. Now, Isaiah chapter 10, verse 26, not 27, 26. And, you know, Exodus 4, 14. This whole thing, you know, wait, wait, before you even go there. This whole thing, take me to 25. I think 25 will have the, the person I'm looking for. 25. 25. Okay, no, it's not the 26. It's, you have to go higher in the scripture. But actually, it's talking about Moses. This is actually talking about Moses. So, it's a mysterious teaching on the anointing. When God told Moses in Exodus 4.14, take the rod. Okay? Exodus 4.14. Take the rod. With, with the rod, you, Moses, will not do wonders. It's the rod. Is that it? No, no, no. 
Find it for me. Take this rod. Find it for me. I find it for me. I thought it was Exodus 450. Yes. No, no, no. He says, take the rod in your hand. And with this rod, very good, you shall do signs. Yes. Oh, you can, you can go back. Uh, um, yoke, yoke brothers, you can go back. You will do signs with what? The rod. No, no, no. Moses can't do anything. The whole verse is about Moses. I just want you to, I want you to only think about Moses. Take this rod. So, Moses took the rod. Pastor Joshua, what's the rod? What does the rod symbolize? What are you talking about? What's the rod? When Moses stood before Pharaoh, his words rather made them angry. So he had to drop the rod to change it into a snake. When Moses lifted his rod over the river, it turned into blood. Not Moses himself. When Moses took the rod and spread it across Israel, it brought locusts. And frogs. The rod. So God told him, pick up the rod. If you want to do wonders in your ministry, pick up the rod. That's how you do wonders. When Moses stood before the sea, nowhere to go. Pharaoh and his armies behind you. The whole nation is counting on you. The Bible says he picked up his rod. Lifted it up. When there was no water for the people to drink, Moses took the rod. All these are the yokes of Israel. Why am I saying that? Because in Isaiah chapter 10, verse 26, it says, The Lord of hosts shall stir up a sketch for him, just like or according to the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Oreb. As his rod was upon the sea, in the same way as his rod was lifted across the sea, watch this. So shall he lift it like what he did to the Egyptians with that rod. The many things he did to the Midianites and the Egyptians with the rod of Moses. The, the verse doesn't even talk about Moses because Moses is irrelevant. Moses is the anointed and the rod is the anointing. Shh, why am I saying that the rod is the anointing? Because in verse 27 it says that. And it shall come to find the day that you pick the rod up. In the day you pick the rod up, his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and the yoke will be broken from your neck. And why will all these yokes disappear? Because of that rod. He said, because of the anointing. God, when I go, Pharaoh will not believe me. What will I do? Lift up the rod. But when I go, the sea will not open. What do I do? Lift up the rod. But when I go, and they will be in battle, and they will be overcoming us. What will I do? As Joshua is fighting in the valley with Amalek, lift up the rod. So he advised Moses at the beginning of his ministry. See that rod? The rod represented the anointing. That's why he gave the reason. The yoke will be destroyed not because of the rod. The rod is representing the anointing. Take up your rod with your rod. Pick up your anointing. With your anointing, you will do wonders. Wonders. The sea is in front of you. You don't know where to go. Hmm. Because of the anointing. Pick up, pick up, pick up your anointing. In Micah chapter 6. Micah chapter 6. Verse 9. Verse 9. It says, The Lord's voice cried to the city. The wise man will see that is God. Hear ye. How can you hear a rod? It's just an anointing. Hear ye the rod. That's the, the, the power of God, the anointing. And the God who appointed that rod. The rod is the anointing of God. So he prophesied. There are many strange prophecies like this in Isaiah. If you're interested. Isaiah 20, 10 verse 26. It shall be in the manner that it was lifted over Egypt. In that day, he was prophesying about today. So in that day, a lot of people pick up their rods. 
the anointings, their gifts, that which belongs to them, sent forth by the Holy Spirit. The power of God, the anointing on your life, the Spirit upon you, to pick up the rod. And how Midian was slaughtered. And as his rod was upon the sea, so shall he lift it after the manner of Egypt. When he closed the, the sea on the Egyptian soldiers, he closed it. And so it will come to pass in that day, 27. The day that the guy picks up the, ro- the, the rod, he shall come to pass that. First of all, what burden do you have? Oh. Oh. <laughs> burden will be lifted. The yoke can't cross 100. Can't cross 50. Can't start a new center. Can't overcome. Can't seem to cross 25. Talk, I'm a pastor of 30. Can't, I can't do anything. It's a yoke. Yoke of iron. Galatians, in the book of Galatians chapter 6, Paul talks about the yoke of bondage. Tied to demons and devils. Can't let go. Pick up your rod, my brother. We'll do signs. We'll do signs. And the yoke. I would have rather ask like Moses. Good. I said I'll tell you about Moses. Moses, the Bible says in Acts chapter 7 that it entered into his heart to visit his brethren. Best teaching of Moses is from Stephen, Acts chapter 7. It entered into his heart. He had the right heart mm. to visit his brethren. Wow. So, when he went to visit the brethren, he saw an Egyptian maltreating her. So he tried to use force mm. to break the yoke mm. that was on the people of Israel. He was the anointed pastor called to lead Israel. But to minister and to free them to serve God. He tried to use his energy. Mm. Fighting hard. And he defended him and avenged him and smote the Egyptian. 25. And he thought that his brethren would have understood. Mm. He thought that people of Israel would understand him. That, oh, he came to fight for us and he was forcing. And he really used his strength. And most of us are forcing to save Israel with our strength. God has not asked for your help. And rather the people turned against him. They understood not. Next verse. And when he, when he did his neighbor wrong, he that did his neighbor wrong, thrust him away saying, who made you a ruler and a judge of us? Will you kill me? Next verse. Will you kill me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? Next verse. And Moses fled and went to the land of Madian. Try to save the people with your own power. God's way, pick up the rod. Pick up the anointing. Breaks the yoke. Breaks the limitation. Breaks the bondage. Breaks the burden. Breaks the wickedness. I don't know what's standing in front of your ministry. Eh? I don't know if you are losing the, the fight down in the valley. <laughs> Bible says, and with, his rod, with the rod in his hand, Moses, he lifted up his hands over the fight with the rod. The rod. The rod. It was the answer to everything. Every problem Moses encountered, the answer was the rod. And it's beautiful. Though. Isaiah 10, 26 and 27. It's beautiful. The rod is actually the anointing. The rod is the anointing. You shall do signs. One this. Shall I show you something strange? Isaiah 28, verse 11. One of my favorite scriptures. So precious, I don't know what I'm saying. I may cut it from the recording. Isaiah 28, verse 11. For with stammering lips. This was Isaiah speaking about the last days. Speaking about the, what is going to happen. He says, for with stammering lips, he will speak to this people. Now jump to 21. Remember 11 and jump to 21. This is Maria Woodworth Etta. That is just, he says, The Lord shall rise up. You'll be confused. As in the days in Mount Perazim. And he shall be wroth. As in the valley of Gibeon. That he may do his work. His strange work. You see, the last days are filled anointing. The last days, 
the last days are prophet that he may do his strange work. The last days are supposed to, God is going to rise up. I know you don't understand. Like Perazim and Gibeon. You don't worry. And he's going to perform his strange work. And then this is my favorite one. And bring to pass his act. His strange, strange, strange things will be happening in your ministry. That's what's prophesied for the last day. Strange things. Strange things. Strange things. Strange things. things. Walk into a room and people start crying. You walk through corridors and people are giving their lives to Christ. You preach before you finish, people are being healed. You start so many churches, you forget how many you have. Strange, strange. So this is what uh, I thought you should teach about the strange acts of God. This was the verse. Next verse, 22. 22. Now therefore, be ye not mockers, yet your, let, lest your pants, your yokes, be made stronger. Go back to verse 21. What did God do in Perazim? What are they talking about? In the last days, that's in our time, Isaiah prophesied that God is going to rise up like in the days of uh, on the Mount of Perazim and the Valley of Gibeon. So let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 17 and find out what he's talking about. I'm talking about it is the anointing that breaks the yoke. When the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines came up to seek David, and David went ahead of it and went down into the hold. Most theologians believe that he went back to the cave of Adullam. That's the hold that they're talking about. Verse, verse, verse 18. And the Philistines came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. Watch this. Next verse. And David inquired of the Lord, should I go up to the Philistines? Will you deliver them into mine? And God said, go up. Go up. I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into your hand. 20. David came to Baal Perazim. This is what happened in Perazim. Talking to you about ancient prophecies. Ancient prophecies. And, the, and David smote them there and said, The Lord has broken forth upon my enemies as the breach of waters. Waters flowing. Waters flowing. Waters flowing. Now, this, this passage can be mysterious because David didn't actually fight in the battle. But it's not so clear until you go to verse 21. And they left their images, that's their God's and David and his men burned them. 22. And the Philistines came again in the valley of Rephaim. Keep going. And David inquired, Lord, should I? They said, no, no, no. This time, this time, don't go up to fight. Go behind them and hide under the mulberry trees. Watch this. Next verse. And let it be when you hear the sound. You see, in the book of Acts, there was a sound that filled the room. And it was a sign that the Holy Spirit was descending. And it says, when you hear the sound, then you stir up yourself. Be stir means to stir up yourself. And then thou shalt go out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. 25. And they did so and smote the Philistine. What happened was, when you read this story in Chronicles, what happened was that God actually sent an invisible and unseen army before them in the valley of Gibeon. And they smote all the Philistines. Then God made a sound and called David to come and pick up the pieces. So what Isaiah was saying is that in the last days, we won't be fighting, you know, 
using our strength, you know, exercising ourselves. I sense a lot of that too. Forcing, push it, move it. The Lord will, will raise himself up as in the Mount of Perazim and in the Valley of Gibeon to perform a strange, a strange, you see? It's not strange for you to bring three people to church. I'm sorry. It's not strange. I'm talking about strange harvests. Strange church growth. We were 3,000. The next year we were 6,000. Then after that, the next year we were 30,000. And the next year we were, were 50,000. And he, then he said, and since then we've been fulfilling prophecies. He said there's the prophecies in the Bible are all in the thousands. Strange work, strange work, strange work. God will go and find, I wish we could read in the Quran, we don't have time. God will go, when you go home, go read. God will go before David. When you hear sound, when you hear the Holy Spirit, when you hear the move, they will just join. I've noticed a lot of that. Too. Many times I've been ministering, I've been praying. When I'm going to pray for somebody, I feel like, no, he's already been praying. God has already touched him, just joined my hand. He, he's going, he should go. <laughs> God is touching the people. God is building his church. You've not seen it before. Like the Basantes brought 40, but you were 400. You've not, you've not experienced that before. I have. I've experienced that before. They bust 80 people, and the attendance was 600. You've not seen it. We don't know where they came from. It's not your work. A strange work. I love this, because this, this is Maria Woodworth, a testimony. Says that David didn't have to fight. He only had to inquire of the Lord. Should we do it? God said yes. And God does it for you. That's the anointing. Strange work. A strange act. Strange things. Take your rod. I'm advising you. You've gone to free the Israelites alone. You don't have a rod. You took a t shirt. You shall do signs. Where's your anointing? Where's your anointing? You shall do signs. You know, put it up for me again. I, uh, um, Isaiah 28, 21. 11, 21, 20. You know, when she teaches it, she puts 11, 21, and 22 together. She was preaching to mockers. She said, you, you are mocking. You are mocking. Because her, her church, when you come, you knew one crosses the water, even to give an offering on the floor. Then you have a vision. God speaks to you. Go back. No, ma'am. Strange. She said, these are strange works, but don't be a mocker. They're strange. 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 That's what I'm believing God for. It is not the anointed that breaks the yoke. No, the anointed doesn't break the yoke. It's the anointing. It's not the anointed. Check it. Check your, check your Bible. It's not the man. So, so you need to want what is on the man. That's what breaks the yoke. It's the rod in his hand that breaks the yoke. You should want the rod. You should be searching for the rod. I want the rod. Hear ye the rod. And he who has appointed it. The rod. It is the anointing that breaks. Where, where have you reached? Pharaoh is holding your people. We will not let them go. Or he says they should go and leave their cattle. Or he says they should go and leave their women. Or he says they should go, but now he's chasing them. Or what does he see in front of you? What stands before your ministry all in? What is it? Is there an army? There's no food. There's no food. Lift your rod up. Call for manna. There's no meat. Call for ravens. Take your rod. You will do signs. Amen. Yes, for the Lord shall rise up as in Mount Perazim. You'll be angry, like in the valley of Gibeon. The second time was in the valley of Gibeah or Gibeon, same way. That he may do his work. He's coming to do it himself. His strange work. And his act. His strange act. Strange, strange, strange. The Holy Spirit is real. The Holy Spirit is more real than me and you. He's with us now. He's walking around. He's walking around. He's here now as we speak. He's here. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the anointing. That's what makes things work. That's what makes things work. What yoke is on your neck? What yoke is on your neck? What yoke? Never ending. Seems to be part of you. 
Never change it. Some of you, your wisdom level is low. Wisdom level is low. Can't, your intelligence level is low. Your understanding is low. Some of you are lazy. It's a yoke on your neck. Unspiritual. You can't pray. That's why Paul said we have this infirmity. It's a sickness. Sickness of many pastors. Romans 8. We don't know. This is the sickness. We don't know what to pray and then how. No, I've been to you before. <laughs> Even sometimes you know this. You give me the topic. Go and pray. How, how, how to pray? Giving steps and principles. My Bible tells me that the Spirit itself. The Spirit itself. The Spirit itself. Prays for you. With groanings that you couldn't have said. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. You must reach the point where you are praying. Then you are in a chair. And there's somebody in the room with me now. It happened to me. And I can only cry. I can only cry. I can't even speak in tongues. I can't say anything. I can only cry. And I'm alone. And it's 3 a.m., 3.12. And I'm in a chair. And I'm alone. And I'm more alive than I've ever been. Every part of my being is on fire. Somebody is with me in the room. I've never been scared to open your eyes. And the only thing I can hear is the voice of the anointed speaking in my room. Mysterious. It's where ministry comes from. It's where ministry comes from. Billy Graham said, I, I, I spend time in the mountains in prayer, walking, walking, many, many times alone, but once or a few times with my wife, walking and reading through my sermon notes and praying for God to have his way. A man who doesn't speak in tongues, praying for hours. What's he saying? It's a level it can't be at it. It's a level which can be attained. It's a place. It's a place in God. When you come out, you start to speak the words of God. You start to speak the words of God. You know, that's the truth about preaching. Jesus said, what I whisper to you in secret, I whisper to you in secret. That's what Jesus said. That preach ye in the house of what I, I think what I'm trying to say to you is that mm. you are trying to find a way to make your church grow. Mm. You are trying to find the truth about your church, about church growth. Mm. And you are trying to find how to bring your church growth to life. Mm. And you think that there are steps and there are strategies, but the truth is that he says, I am the way. Mm. I, I, God, am the way to make your church grow. I am also the truth about church growth. Mm. And I am also the life. Mm. I am, I, I am. I, God, I. We always want to find something else apart from Him, Him, God Himself. Yeah. Forget about attempting to practice Frank. He, He with you. you no, know, like He is with you. He's with you as a friend. He's helping you, holding your hand. They were working over, the Lord working with them. It's different. The Lord working with them and confirming His word with signs and wonders. Signs and wonders, signs and wonders, signs and wonders. Oh, Jesus. Anointing is something. Converts people. Converts people into something you can't even recognize. Can't even recognize it. Can't, can't understand what's going on. Tell us one said, If you encounter me, you've encountered your destiny. He said, Yes, yes. If you encounter me, Said if you, if you meet a man like me, your destiny is changed. Mm. Yes, it's not a proud statement. It is a true statement. Then he explained. He said, for God was with him. 
So God, God, God is with me. So if you encounter me, you've encountered your destiny. Maurice Rulo said that my greatest calling and my desire is to take the anointing that God has put on my life and share it for other people. <laughs> ah, you never understand it. You don't have to talk about this, talk about that. No, no. Serulo is in partition. You receive it. Because he knows. Bishop Ajinasai, lay hands. Ask Bishop, he lay hands. Sorry, sons. Lay hands, lay hands, lay hands. Receive, receive, receive. All these teachings, you receive it, receive it. Receive it. That's why I like to teach that it's in the oil. That's what breaks the yoke. It's all in the oil. You can, I can go through story after story after story after story. There is a king of Israel. There is a king. He's standing there. God doesn't want him to be there. He said, anoint Jehu. Anoint Jehu to be king. No meetings. No discussions. Prophet sent one of his little like, younger prophets, one of the boys in the school. When he went, Jehu was in with uh, amongst his brethren. Mm. But God can never anoint you in, in public. In front of you. Anointing is always in the back room. Mm. In the mountains, in the back room, when you are alone, when you are by yourself, when nobody is there. That's where real anointing takes place. Mm. So he, he stepped out until he was alone, mm. and there were only three, three, three people in the room. Mm. The oil, that's the Holy Spirit. The guy who was to be anointed and the prophet. That's, that's the formula. Be alone in a room. You, the Holy Spirit, and the voice of your prophet. That's all. There's nothing else. That's the formula. The Bible says, and you broke a box of oil on his head. So it's, it's not because God has anointed you to become king. And he opened the door and he fled. That's all. Now, Jehu has to now learn parliament, government, army skills, how to overcome, how to water. It's all in the oil. Everything was in the oil, he said. That's all. I can take you through scripture after scripture. We can keep going and going and going. Everything is in the oil. Everything, everything. Your, your everything, your everything resides in the oil, dripping down, flowing down your body. It's all inside the oil. I can take you through scripture after scripture. David, the same. David was called. Hey, you have a son, Lord, call him small boy. He came from the village. He said, kneel down. You are, you are king over Israel. You didn't take him to a palace. They didn't call meetings of the elder tribe leaders. Nothing. Lord has anointed you to be king over Israel. Then, from there, you just wait. He's king already. <laughs> it will, it, parliament, army, mighty man, Saul should hear of you. Saul should call you to play for him. You should come. You kill Goliath. You go, oh! It's in the oil. It's all in the oil. It's all in the oil. All in for you to have a church. You have to be hard, you have to be mature, you have to be spiritual, you have to be prayerful, you have to be gifted, you have to find a land, you have to find raise money, you have to learn how to take offering, you have to stay in touch, you have to communicate, you have to read, you have to seek God, you have to go on waiting, you have to do administration, you have to have a Google for all, 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 all that I am is in whatever oil, if there's any, whatever oil I have on my head. Everything I'm doing is all in it. It's in the sweet caramels. And the frankincense and the coriander seed it's all inside it's in the oil it's in the oil it's in the oil it's in the oil do you have oil? do you have any oil? do you have any oil? So I tell you I tell you see Reginald Reginald you don't need to have anything else. You know? That's why the prophet asked the woman, is there anything at home? I mean, I know you don't, you don't even in your own house, you don't want it. Your own children, they are coming to take it away. They are taking your children away. They are taking, you owe husband, you don't have husband, he's dead. Your house, you don't have any money, you don't have any food, no furniture, you don't have anything, you have anything at home at all. I have a cruise of oil. It is enough. It is enough. That thing that you have, it is enough. It is enough. Jesus. You, have, you don't need anything. I'm going to miss you. You don't need banner, pop up, star, light. You don't need anything. Just the oil. 
chase it, chase it, chase it. I've showed you where it is. I've showed you what it is. Chase the oil. Chase it. Till, chase it till it's on your life. And it should be on your life in full. Mm. Don't, don't exclude yourself for whatever earthly reason you have in your mind. I'm a lay pastor. You're a lay pastor. King David was what? King David was what? I mean, your prosperity alone should have, should have, you should have taken the mic from me and said, if you can receive it. Mm. <laughs> if you can receive it. <laughs> the prosperity mantle, you can receive it. <laughs> I need you, Holy Spirit. I don't have enough. I don't know. I don't, I don't have you. I, I need you, Lord. I need you more. I need you more. I need you more. I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel. That's a little word. Got a little word, a few verses, but I have a cruise. A cruise of oil. A cruise of oil. That's all I got left. A cruise of oil. It's enough. This oil paid her debts, freed her children, and made her prosperous. Made her famous. All the, the neighbors got involved. The oil. They brought the prophet to her house. He did everything. The oil. It's in the oil. Mm. Need a, I, that's why I said, I, I'll never forget those words prophet said. I believe in the anointing more than all of you. Oh, thank you, Lord God. I believe in the anointing more than all of you. I said, wow. I believe what, what is working. It's not a step. It's not a book. It's the anointing. I ask you, ask you, that's what I believe. Oof. Feel his presence. It's something, man. Eh? Foster, that's all. Are you anointed, gifted, spiritual, carrying something? No, no, our church is about to change you. Yes. Our church is really, 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 really about to change you. Yeah. I have a cruise of oil. Mm. Let your garments be white. Just make sure that your head head doesn't lack oil. Make sure that your head doesn't lack oil. So anyway, I think we are blessed. The Lord will rise up us in the Mount of Perez. I pray with this verse alone. I pray for strange acts. Strange work. It's my favorite sermon from Etta. Strange work. Stammering lips. Strange acts. Strange works. It is the anointing that breaks the yoke. Exodus 7, 15. Quickly, quickly. 15. Are you there? Get it fair in the morning, and you will stand at the river's brink. And the rod which was turned into a serpent, you will take into your hand. 19. Jump with me to 19. And the Lord spake, take your rod and stretch out your rod over the waters of Egypt on the streams and the rivers and even the ponds in the houses and the pools and, and they will all become blood and there will be blood throughout the rod. 20. Next verse. And Moses and Aaron did so. And as he lifted up the rod and smote the waters in the river, in the sight of Pharaoh, in the sight of his servants, all the water, he touched it. Everybody was watching. Psh, the whole thing became blood. Blood, oh, blood. Water became blood. You even wonder who's blood? Who is it even from? Exodus 8, 1. And the Lord said, let my people go. Two. If you feel slow, I'll, I'll, I'll smite your borders with frogs. Three. And the river will bring forth frogs. It will be in your house, in your bedchamber, in your bed, in the house of your servants, into your ovens, and your needing troughs. I'll bring frogs everywhere. Next one. And the frogs will come on you and your people and all your servants. Five. And the Lord said, stretch your hand with your rod. Stretch your hand with your rod. Call the frogs. God. Like the rod, no. The rod, no, it was 
everything. Just going to read. Exodus chapter 10 verse 3. And Moses came to Pharaoh and said, How long will you refuse to humble yourself? Still, you will not humble yourself and let my people go. 17. Where are we? Exodus chapter 10. I'm sorry. Exodus chapter 10, verse 3. Good. 17 is good, yes. Or 3. How long will you refuse to humble yourself? 4. Keep going. If you refuse to let my people go, I'll bring locusts. Next. They will cover the, the face of the earth. And eat the residue of all that which has escaped. Next. Fill your houses. Seven. It's a long one. How, how long shall this man be a snare? Next. And Aaron brought again, go and serve your God. Who are those who will go? Go. We will go with our young, our old, our sons, our daughters, our flocks, our heads. Everybody in my church is going. Next. He said, let your God be with you. I will let you go. And your little ones look to it for the evil before you. Next. Not so. Go now, those who are men, and serve the Lord. And they were driven out of first presence. Only the men should go. Next. And the Lord said, stretch your hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts, that they may come to everybody. Next. And Moses stretched forth his rod. The rod. So in the wilderness, you understand why God told him, brother, take your rod. Pick it up. Go with it. You will do wonders. And he says, in the last days, it will be just like the road over the sea and the Egyptians that were slaughtered. And because of their anointing, the yoke will be broken. So many, I don't think we can go into all of that. But may God bless you with the anointing. May he bless you with the anointing. May the gift of God that you are called to hold may it rest on you. May the anointing of your prophet flow, 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 flow. Lord, we are so hungry. So hungry. So hungry for you. So hungry. So hungry. So desperate. So desperate. So desperate. Rise up like in the Mount Perazim to perform your strange work, your strange acts. Strange work, strange acts. Hey Lord, we are nothing, no. little boys and girls. Need your anointing. Take your rod, and with it you will do wonders. Wonders. You know, you know, it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. Not the man. Don't don't make that mistake. It's, but but the anointing is with the anointing. But it's the anointing that is what is on him that you need. To break the yoke. In Acts 3 12, I think, Peter said, Why are you looking at us? As if by our own power and holiness we have made this man whole. Don't look at the man as if his power or his holiness. No. Look at him knowing that he's anointing. His God is what breaks the yoke, makes it change. Jesus name. Sit down.
You know, I think we haven't believed in the anointing as we should. As the real secret behind everything. There's no mission, no task, no work that God sent you to that will fail if you have the Holy Spirit. There's nothing. Once you, once you, once you obey God and you are, you are anointed, that, that's what makes a difference. You know, without that, each of you must know God. Each of you must be anointed. Without that, we can't. Is it Annie? It's Annie, right? Yeah. You know, Pentecost University. So you can call us that the authorities, the whole masters. Ooh, ooh. Herod. Herod and Pilate and the people of Israel. They all gathered. <laughs> they gathered together against the Holy Child, Jesus. So they, they prayed that they're trying to gather again. Grant your servants boldness. You see, try to believe. If God is with me, you see that, that that's the that's the path. With God, with God, all things are possible. With with God is the clause. With that's the presence of God. With it, nothing is impossible. I mean, I really believe we are. I believe we are walking into a new level of the anointing, and an anointed church. I truly believe it. I truly believe it. I just want to shift your focus. Let, let me be anointed. You show you what to do. You show you where to go. It'll give you wisdom. I, I, you know, it give you so many. It you change you. Show you what to do, who to talk to, what to say. You touch your words. Your presence will be His presence. People will sense an aura around you. People will sense something. You will overcome. You will overcome. God is going to bless us and God is going to anoint us.